Uh, so in addition to colors, uh, our brain can quickly and also automatically perform some processing. So for example, when we read this paragraph, even though each single word are not correct, we can still understand this paragraph is talking about. Uh, so that means that our brain um, can autopilot. Uh, so there are some <coughs> uh, different type of data that we can use those uh, pre-attentive visual attribute to visualize those type of different type of data. So when we're talking about different type of data, we, we have the categorical data, so that data in different uh, classes. Ordinal data, so that means there is an order in the data, like uh, first, second, uh, third, higher, lower, etc. And we have the numbers, okay? And those pre-attentive uh, attribute um, that our brain process immediately. So, <clears throat> so we can understand those information pre-attentively. So those visual attributes like lens, uh, width, shape, size, positions, or orientations, etc. And also colors. Okay. Uh, so studies um, showed that uh, for those different type of data, so it is suitable to those those pre-attentive visual attributes. So like for categorical data, we can use position, shape, or colors. Uh, for ordinal data, we can use position, size, colors, and also shape. Uh, for quantitative data, we can use positions, lens, size, and also colors. Okay, uh, so there are some type, different types of those graphs. So like the graphs to show the numbers and the frequencies, we have the histograms, uh, box plot, and also scatter plot. Uh, we also have the line and the bar graphs, and also we have the graphs without axis, like pie graph and the clock graph. Uh, we can also even create those three dimensional graphs. Uh, we histogram. So histogram, we have learned this one um, from the statistics. So that histogram is used to show the, the occurrence of the data values in the statistical distribution. So this is a one example of the histogram. So that uh, we can see that the number of the records in different range of in different bins. Okay, so the number of the records in different bins. So this is used to show the distribution of a single variable. Okay, so in this case, we can say there are a lot of the records in this range, but we have a few records in this range. So that is a histogram. Box plot is used to show the percentile summary of the data set, and it is great to compare the distribution of multiple variables. Okay, so that is a box plot. So let's review the box plot. So the, the middle line of the box plot shows the median values. Remember that is not the average, that is the median values. And within this box, we have the upper quantile and also lower quantile. Okay, and those two bars indicate the maximum value and also minimal value excluding those outliers okay so remember that in box plot the minimal and also maximum values are not the biggest or the smallest values so those are the uh, mix and the maximal and also minimal values excluding the outliers Outliers are defined as a value that is greater than 3 by 2 times of the upper quantile or lower than that um, 1.5 times of the lower quantile. So here this is an example. So here we have the variables, three variables. Okay, we see that uh, the yellow one has the highest, the mean values, and the red one has the lowest <coughs> minimal values and the blue one has a lot of outliers 
Okay, the max, the highest outliers. Okay, so that is a box plot. And the scatter plot is used to show the relationship of two variables. Okay, the relationship of two variables. So, uh, for, for example, here we can see the relationship between the weight and also price. We can see when the weight increase, the price also increase. Okay, so, so that both variables uh, have a strong positive relationship. We can, of course, add a third um, dimension or a third variable so that we can use a size to indicate a, deep, a, a third variable. So here, this is another example. So here, we're using the size to indicate the clarity. Okay, personally, I will not use size to so that because that one makes the uh, visualization to be more complicated. Okay. <clears throat> And next is a line graph. So line graph is used to visualize the trends. Okay. So specifically, line graph is used to show the variables, how the variable change over time. Okay. So how the variable change uh, over time. So this is one example of the uh, line graph. So here we have three lines, and we can see that. At in this time range, so there's a peak, so there's an increase in this time range uh, for this red variable, and there's a decrease at this time period. Okay, so that is a line graph. Bar graph is just simply used to use the height or length of the bar to represent data. So uh, it uses a one-dimensional object, which is the length, just to compare the values in different categories. Okay. Uh, so in this case, we can see that the, the blue variable has the highest values and the orange one and also red one have the similar um, values. And, and, and the bar, bar graph can also be compound or complex. <coughs> okay, so for, for example, that in this bar graph, uh, we have multiple portions, okay? And all the parts together indicate the values, but within each part, we can see that how different categories are distributed within each ring, within each variable. All right, so that is a bar graph. Um, pie graph is a variation of the bar graph, so that just instead of using the bars, uh, we are using the pies, we are using the circle to represent the entire. Uh, Data set, and we can use different uh, colors to represent different parts of this or different variables. Uh, so when we're using pie graph, remember that we should try to avoid using a single color. Okay, so we try to avoid using single color, but instead we should use different colors to represent different variables or different data set. Okay, uh, so that is a pie graph. Uh, we also have the clock uh, graph, uh, so that is used. That is also another variation of the bar graphs, so that the clock graph can be used to represent to compare uh, the variables, the multiple variables, just in, on a single uh, visualization. Okay, uh, so that is very useful for the directional data, also used for the uh, for the windows. And lastly, uh, we also have those 3D uh, visualizations or the 3D graphs. Okay, um, I think uh, one thing to keep in mind is that try to avoid using 3D visualizations. Okay, uh, because people tend um, to have less accurate perception of the 3D uh, visualizations. So try to avoid using 3D graphs. So that is something, that is really one thing you, you need to remember. Keep in mind that do not use 3D visualizations.